Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we are going to cover how to modify nouns with clauses. So in addition to noun modification and adjective modification of nouns such as noun no noun or adjective noun, we can also modify nouns with clauses and this is very similar to the English usage of a noun that blank such as a dog that died or a dog that jumped over the fence. So this is similar to that English usage but on the other hand in Japanese the clause is going to precede the noun itself instead of in English where the clause is kind of succeeding the noun in that it's x that y and x is the noun and y is the descriptor. In Japanese the descriptor is going to be in front of the noun. So it's going to be something along the lines of Niku o taberu hito. Here we see that hito is the noun that we're using, but it's at the end of the sentence, and niku o taberu is this clause that modifies that noun and it is in front of the noun. So when we're using this grammar construct, we are going to make sure that the predicate clause that modifies the noun itself is going to be in the plain form. And the plain form is inclusive of the dictionary form, the nai form, the past ta form, and these other forms. And you should definitely note which forms are plain and which ones are polite because there are distinctions that need to be made, such as in this case where we need to use the plain form and we cannot use the polite form. And those would be things like the mas form and the mashita form and the masen form and whatnot. And basically the reasoning behind making sure that this is in the plain form is because when a noun modifying clause is used in any sentence, it's going to be the first predicate clause in the sentence because it's going to precede the noun and the noun is going to have to have stuff happen after it. And that stuff that happens after the noun is going to be the second predicate clause. And in the Japanese language, the general guideline here is that when you have two predicate clauses in a sentence, it's the second one that ends the sentence that needs to be in the polite form if you're using the polite form at all. And the first one can just stay in the plain form. You'll see this guideline show up in numerous other grammar constructs that we will eventually encounter as we go on with this video series so it is a good thing to keep in mind. So yeah, now that we've done the exposition for this grammar construct, let's just move into some quick examples to get a better idea of this. So for the first example, we'll go back to the clause that I mentioned earlier, niku o taberu hito. While this isn't an actual sentence because the subject of the sentence isn't doing anything, it is still giving us an idea of how this grammar construct works because we have hito as the noun here and we have niku o taberu as the clause that is modifying this noun and we see that it is in plain form. Let's break it down. First up we have niku which is meat. We have o which is the direct object particle to mark meat as the thing that is going to be acted upon. And then we have taberu and taberu is to eat and here it's in its dictionary form which is one kind of plain form so this fits the bill and niku o taberu hito is a noun that is being modified by a clause. For our next example we have the simple line kata timu wa and this is pretty tricky because this is a question that doesn't have the particle ka to denote that it's a question. Instead it's one that has a rising intonation and an incomplete sentence basically as to imply that the addressee should finish the blank or fill in the blank and finish the sentence which in turn answers the question. So can you figure out what the noun that is being modified by a clause in this is? Well it's the word chimu and this is the katakana word for team and if we know that team is the noun that is being modified by a clause here then we should also know that the clause that actually modifies it is the stuff that is in front of it. So the only thing that is in front of team in this sentence is kata. So what is kata? Well katsu is the verb to win. And here it is conjugated into kata, which is its past ta form, so kata. So together, what does that make kata chimu? That is going to be the team that won. And following that is simply the particle wa. So here all we have is the team that won is. Well, what does this sentence mean? Well, the person who's speaking is basically asking for the winner of the match. Who is the team that won? The team that won is dot 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 and he's waiting for the addressee to answer his question. For our next example, we actually have a full sentence so uh, this will be helpful definitely. Our example is Akihabaru e iku densha wa doko desu ka? So let's break the sentence down bit by bit. First up we have Akihabara which is a place in Tokyo. We have e which is the locational marker so to Akihabara. After that we have the word iku which means to go. So to go to Akihabara. Uh, then right after iku we have densha which is the noun that is being modified by the clause here. Densha means train and together with the predicate clause that preceded it, 
Akihabara e Iku. This is going to be Akihabara e Iku Densha, which is the train that goes to Akihabara. Following that, we have the particle wa to denote that as the topic of the sentence, and then we have doko desu ka, which is just where, and then desu ka is to end the sentence, and the ka is turning that into a question. So, all together, Akihabara e Iku Densha wa doko desu ka is where is the train that goes to Akihabara. So, there we go, that's pretty simple. Now, let's shoot out two more really quick examples. For our next one, we have manten o tota hito. Again, this isn't a complete sentence, but it will further solidify our understanding of this grammar construct. Manten is perfect score. O is the direct object, so perfect score is going to be the thing acted upon. Tota is the past ta tense of the verb toru, which means to take or to get in this case. And then right after that, we have hito again, which means person. So, manten o tota hito is person who scored perfectly or who got a perfect score. And the context here is probably. A group of people were mutually taking some sort of test or exam, and this speaker is asking who the person who got the perfect score is. And the person speaking is referring to the person who scored perfectly or who got the perfect score. Manten o tota hito is person who scored perfectly or person who got the perfect score. For our next example, we have another not sentence but a good example. Sanka shitaku nakata hito. So this one's pretty tough and different from the previous ones. Uh, there's no direct object here. There's no direct object marker here. It's just sanka shitaku nakata. So let's analyze this. For our first word, we have sanka, which means to participate. And sanka can be used as a noun verb. So this will explain the word that directly succeeds it. And that word is shitaku nakata. And this is the past negative plain form of the Thai form of the verb sudu, which means to do. So that was a mouthful. What does that mean? Well, sudu in its Thai form is shitai, which means to want to do. If we want to conjugate that furthermore into to not want to do, it's going to be shitaku nai. But if we're going to conjugate that again into the past tense, as in did not want to do, it's going to be shitaku nakata. And that is the plain past form, not the polite past form, because again, when you're using a clause to modify a noun, we're going to stick to the plain form, not the polite form. So shitaku nakata is did not want to do. Well, did not want to do what? Well, again, like I said, sanka suru is a noun verb. So sanka shitaku nakata is did not want to participate. Add that on to the noun hito, and we have the person who did not want to participate. Sanka shitaku nakata hito. So there we go. That's the video for covering uh, modifying nouns with clauses.、Uh, that should give a pretty good idea. And it is really well used. It's frequently used. It's naturally used in everyday conversation and writing. So do bear that in mind. And yeah.